Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and in this video, I want to share with you an article that I found that was published about a couple of weeks ago, and it details a potentially new method for resin 3D printing that I thought was really interesting. So let's check it out. The headline reads, scientists develop new process for multi-material resin 3D printing using near infrared light. Now, right off the bat, the thought of being able to print a model using different types of resin with different functionalities and capabilities is inherently really interesting to me. But what they're also doing is using this near infrared light that can apparently target specific portions of a model to print it in a completely different material than the other parts of the model. So here's a little bit more of an explanation for how this is going to go. It says that traditional SLA resin 3D printing applies a blue or UV laser to a liquid resin, which is selectively solidified layer by layer. That's the thing that we're most used to. However, this process lacks material intermixing capabilities. And through the new process, the scientists from Edinburgh's Harriet Watt University were able to employ an NIR light source capable of 3D printing into the resin at greater depths. So what are those greater depths? Well, they say that an advantage of this NIR method is the ability to 3D print at depths of over five centimeters, which is a big increase from the traditional 0.1 millimeter depth limit. And another key benefit to the process is that it allows users to 3D print a part in one material and adding a second material later on. And the second material is not limited to the top and outer surfaces of the 3D printed part and can be solidified at any position in the 3D space because the laser can penetrate through the outer layer of the initial part. And here's a quote right here. For example, we can print a hollow cube that is mostly sealed on all sides. We can then come back later and print an object made from an entirely different material inside the box because the NIR laser will penetrate through the previous material as if it were invisible because in fact, it is completely transparent at the NIR. So you might be wondering how in the world do they take an object that's made out of one type of resin and then create additional structures on that same object using an entirely different type of resin with different capabilities? Well, it was outlined here in this paper in which they demonstrated the experiment and everything that they did. And basically what it's saying here is, once they printed the first resin 3D model using a, con a conventional photopolymer resin that's cured with UV light, like the ones that we use, they then took that model and submersed it in a different type of resin. And this resin contained an upconversion phosphor. And then they used that NIR laser, which penetrated deep into the resin as if it were transparent, and it was allowed to write additional 3D structures on the previous previously generated piece. So here's an example of what they were able to achieve using this method. So here in this first picture is the single material that they use, just looks like a little yellow bridge. And then using this exact same yellow bridge here, they printed this other bridge right on top of it. And then here's an example of the cube that they have, like a little lattice cube. And then they were able to print a structure inside of this exact same cube. And in this little example here for D, you see that there's another cube, but then on the inside, they used another type of resin. It has two different colors on it to create a structure of red inside of that cube and a structure of yellow inside of that cube as well. And then at the very bottom is an example of using two different uh, types of resin with different characteristics. So this part right here is flexible resin down at the bottom and then it's rigid right there on the sides. And of course, I'm going to leave links in the description so you can check all of this out for yourself. But here are just some little notes about each of these uh, photos here where it says that this was the bridge printed with a single material followed by a two color bridge under the bridge and a two color lattice within a lattice, three color print, and then the flexible rigid print down there at the bottom as well. Now, when it comes to like new technologies like this, or at least emerging technologies, these things have a tendency to be extremely expensive. But one of the things that kind of gave me a little bit of reassurance or confidence about whether this can be used in a hobbyist fashion is when they talked about the cost of what it would be to build a machine that's capable of doing this. 
So according to Dr. Jose Marquez Hueso, uh, the guy right here on the left, he talked a little bit about the affordability of it all. And he says that a clear advantage of this technique is that the full machine can be built for less than 400 pounds. And some other advanced technologies that use lasers, such as the two photon polymerization, require expensive ultrafast lasers in the order of tens of thousands of pounds. But this is not our case because our specialist materials allow the use of inexpensive lasers. And now that we have results to support our claims, we hope to, we hope to partner with businesses and develop the technology further. So I think this has the potential to be a really awesome advancement for resin 3D printing because in my mind, I'm thinking about, well, this is figure feedback. So I'm thinking about toys. I'm thinking about action figures. And the thought of being able to basically print an action figure where things like the arms and the legs and the torso can be made of a stronger material like ABS or something like that. But what if you could print the joints out of a very flexible type of resin once it's cured, and then you'll be able to have movement in the arms. And because they're using this near infrared laser that can literally just zoom in and pinpoint a specific part of the model to print using that resin that is going to make up those flexible joints, it seems like it's more of a possibility using this than methods that we are used to today. And it gets even better if they can actually make a machine like this for around 400 pounds. And after the medical community, the scientific and educational communities use them and can vouch for them, if it's successful, like most things, they will trickle down to the hobbyist market as well. And then maybe that can be the new benchmark, the new standard for resin 3D printers, where printing with one type of resin is not going to be the standard across the board anymore. Maybe in the future, starting out, we'll be able to use multiple materials to make things that are more flexible in some areas and more rigid in other areas. And instead of printing statues all the time, maybe we can just print full blown action figures. But only time will tell whether or not this method is successful and can be commercially viable later on down the line. And I hope that it does because it could help usher in an entirely new era of resin 3D printing that goes beyond static objects and into things that are a lot more functional, especially at a price that's affordable to the everyday person. I think it could really help to expand the hobby. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this potentially new method of resin 3D printing. Do you think it's viable? Is it something that you would be interested in? And then also what new advancements in technology in resin 3D printing and resin itself are you hoping to see as the years go by? Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you soon.